Okay, a little follow-up on the Sony ICF 2010. These are my two Sony ICF 2010s. And I know that I did the Q303 mod to one of these. I just don't remember which one. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this one. I think this is the one that I've had practically since brand new. And then this one I believe was a donate that someone did not want repaired at one time that I went ahead and repaired. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop the back off this one and see if I can see what I did to the Q303 protection circuit when I was a Sony factory authorized service center. Okay, so there is the modification that Sony published to be done on these units to take care of the Q303 failure issue. And it's a double diode and it's just labeled MC. I don't know if I can find any reference on that. I cannot find the service bulletin at this point. It's just been too many years. But as you can see, it's across this resistor that looks like it might be, maybe it's a 20k i'm not sure let me get the schematic out on this real quick and we'll try to find out where this is in the circuit but that is the modification that sony wanted us to do to these units to prevent the q303 blowout all right so i went ahead and i pulled the diode out of the unit and i'm just going to go ahead and hopefully it won't fly away if i can get my leads on here so i see 738 in that direction so basically, hopefully it's still in frame here. I've got no diode conductivity on these two pins. So let's reverse the leads. And so we had 738. I see 641. So it looks like it's just a standard double diode, nothing special to it. So I'm thinking we can go ahead and add a couple of 1 in 4148s in its place. It's down in the circuit just a little bit. I think it's gonna be just fine. It's gonna suppress noise and it's actually, I believe, coupled through a capacitor. Now I've seen some forums where they talked about adding four 1 in 4148 or 1 in 914 diodes right across the antenna input jack. I'm thinking that's not the best plan of attack. Uh, this is what Sony came up with and I wanna go ahead and stick with their guidelines. So let's go ahead and just put a couple of back-to-back 1-in-914s or 1-in-4148 type diodes in here and let this thing fly. Okay, well there it is mounted back in the original position that Sony recommended that it be mounted. So let me show you where this is in the schematic. So basically they're just going from the gate to ground with the diode in each direction. That way it prevents any voltage higher than 0.7 or lower than negative 0.7 volts from entering the gate of this FET and should protect it. Now I didn't print out too much of the schematic, but you can see that there's a 220 picofarad coupling cap right there. Uh, there's a 1K resistor right there. There's an 820 picofarad coupling cap right there. And then this is the location right here that Sony wanted us to install that surface mount with the anode and the cathode right here and then the common lead going directly to the gate. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab a couple of 1 in 4148s and put one from the gate to ground with the cathode facing ground and one from the gate to ground with the anode facing ground. And that should give the customer plenty of basically electrostatic discharge protection for this FET. So incidentally, just a couple of other upgrades I've done to this radio since I've owned it practically brand new. If you have problems with the batteries cutting out, they just use this spring contact right here to basically make contact with this pad on the circuit board and it can wear a hole in it over time. So the easiest thing to do is just go ahead and solder a wire to that contact and then solder it to this battery terminal right there. And now for the negative side, they just use this post right here and it suffers from the same issue when it makes contact with the circuit board right here. You can see there's already a hole in it right there. So go ahead and just solder a wire on that, tack it to that lead, and the batteries will never have issues again. Now concerning the memory batteries, you see the little pink wire that's down here. I went ahead and attached that because they attached the memory battery, the negative lead of the battery, to the circuit board in much the same fashion. Let me turn up the exposure so you can see down inside here. And then I'll try to tip this up and you can see there's a pad right there that you can actually apply solder to. And that is the negative lead, the ground lead for the memory or the computer battery as Sony calls it. Now they've already attached it 
with a solder lead to the positive right there as you can see so that's all well and good so i thought i'd give you a couple quick tips on the sony 2010 radios so let's go ahead and get the customer's radio back out i'll tear it back apart we'll add those diodes i'll finalize this thing and ship it back to them so another quick note, if you're doing vintage electronics, try not to strip out the screws any more than necessary. So I know it's gonna be kind of hard to see here, but if I turn the screw counterclockwise, there'll be a point where it actually drops back down into the original threads. And I know I've talked about this many, many times on other repairs but you don't want to cut new threads into this plastic any more than absolutely necessary so you put the screw in and you back it off until you hear a click and that's it actually dropping into the original threads so you're not cutting new threads into the plastic just snug it up don't over tighten it Okay, well, I've got mine all back together. It works perfectly fine. Once again, AM's working, FM's working. So now let's tackle the customer's unit. Okay, well, there's where I chose to mount the diodes between the gate and ground. Virtually the same exact place. The surface mount resistor is underneath the two diodes, and they are spaced up away from the circuit board just a little bit so they don't make contact with anything. So this customer's radio must be a much newer version than mine is because I had the really old style surface mount components, the round resistors. This one actually has the flat pack printed resistors in it. But I'm gonna go ahead and do the battery modification. I'm right here. Might as well run the leads, make sure this thing is gonna be rock solid well, except for that defective clock display. Other than that, I think we're gonna be good. Okay, so there is the negative lead for the computer battery soldered to the circuit board so it should be perfectly fine and like i said the positive leads always been soldered from the factory so that's not an issue and then there is the negative lead for the d cell battery attachment and the positive lead for the d cell battery attachment so let's go ahead and throw this thing back together it's got the new diodes up in there i think this guy should be very happy with this unit Okay, well there it is, back together, running on its own power. Once again, receiving KFI AM640. It is almost 11 o'clock at night, so it is some very good propagation going on right now. But, like I said, that station is 500 miles from here. It's receiving it at, well, basically five bars right now. I can switch it to local. I can still pick it up. Can't pick it up with the gain all the way down. But I think everything's going to be fine. I'm going to pack this thing up, ship it back to the customer. I certainly hope you enjoyed the tutorial, the quick tips on adding the diodes to protect the Q303 FET in this unit. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me, norcal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I have a full-time job, and I do this in my spare time. And please don't send messages to Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, because I rarely check those. Rarely. Please, if you want to contact me, use the Gmail. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.